Hello, how's everyone doing? I hope you guys are having a great week. My name's Amanda and I'm the nurse uh, a community coordinator at the Missouri Poison Center. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about Halloween poison safety. And so I know this Halloween season is gonna look a lot different than what you are traditionally in, in the mood for, you know, less trick or treating, less parties, but we can still have fun with our kids during this Halloween time and keep them poison safe. So today we're gonna to talk about some topics that are related to poison safety. All right, so let's get going. So first I wanna share with you the biggest, by far, poison exposure that we receive on Halloween, which are glow sticks and glow jewelry. So glow sticks and glow jewelry are very nice to keep things lit, to be able to see your kids in the dark, but they are one of the most common Halloween poisons that we see. Now they are very low risk items, so we shouldn't be too alarmed if a puncture or an exposure happens, but they can be a little irritating to the eyes and the mouth. And so some children complain that it's hot or spicy, so they like to, uh, we wanna make sure that they um, are taken care of. So if they swallow it, we're gonna rinse their mouth or wipe out their mouth with water and give them a serving of fluids. Now, if it gets splashed or sprayed or rubbed into the eyes, we wanna make sure we rinse those eyes properly. And rinsing eyes can be a bit of a challenge with a child. Um, sometimes you need to do that in the bathtub or with a cup of water or with a sprayer, and that's all fine to do. And if you need further assistance with any exposure or concern related to a glow sticks, we always encourage parents and caregivers to call the Poison Center directly for that expert medical advice. And our number there is 1-800-222-1222. All right, so moving on from the most common item, here's another item that we often will see exposures with during Halloween, Oops, and that is face paint and face makeup. Gives us a really cute little um, costume idea. It's less obstructive than masks that go over the eyes, um, but we want to make sure that our face paint and our face makeup is mostly considered non-toxic. You're gonna look for that wording as well as look for the wording safety tested on the label. Just an extra precaution for that sensitive skin um, because there is a risk of skin, skin sensitivity and allergy reaction, especially on the, on the face of young children. So a good way to kind of prevent that is to do a skin patch test. And so you're gonna apply that small amount of makeup right here on this inner arm, which is a very um, similar skin to the face. And if the product burns or causes any irritation, you wanna get it off the skin really well with soap and water and then not use it on the face during that Halloween night. But if you experience no reaction after 30 to 60 minutes, you can use the product safely on that child according to the package directions. So just again, look for those words of safety tested, do that extra step in that skin patch test to make sure that um, children's skin is kept, you know, free from any irritation, and then you'll have a better Halloween as well. All right, the next poison that we see in terms of poison for Halloween is dry ice. And dry ice is just as it is. It's ice that is very, very cold. We see temperatures of about a negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which can cause serious frostbite and burns. And so we definitely need to make sure that dry ice is only handled with gloves and with the extra precaution of tongs or something to touch it. Never with your skin um, and never directly in contact. We wanna also make sure that we're not applying it or using it in any drinks or cups because burns to the mouth and throat can and occur if you have direct contact with those surfaces. And of course, we always only let adults use this product in under a safe uh, safety of gloves, as I mentioned. And then it also can off gas. So we wanna make sure that we're going to use dry ice in only areas with really good ventilation. So make sure it's in that outdoor party or somewhere with a window open 
Um, we also want to take care when we transport it in our car, especially if you're going any long distance to make sure that, air, that the um, car itself is ventilated because we don't want that tight confined area to cause any concerns if it's not properly sealed. All right, so dry ice is fun, but definitely one we want to be careful with um, in terms of its safety and children. All right, the best part of Halloween is all those treats that we receive. And maybe this year your trick-or-treating might be a bit different, but we always encourage parents to inspect the candy. So we always say, before you eat, inspect your treat. And so we wanna um, take a look at those candies. We wanna eat only factory wrapped candy and stay away from any homemade goods um, from people we're not familiar with and check for any poorly wrapped items. And then we all always say that the best way to avoid sugar meltdown is to kind of actually bring some pre-inspected candy along with you if you're going out for a little event or gathering. Um, you wanna bring your own candy so you can make sure that that pre-inspected candy is what they grab instead of um, you know, the Halloween box or bad candies directly as well. And we wanna also encourage children not to share candy with friends that might have food allergies. We know that there are lots of issues with that, certainly with peanuts and other types of allergies that many children do have. All right, next. It wouldn't be Halloween without some creepy crawly spiders. And of course I didn't put any pictures here to scare anybody, but we do have two venomous or poisonous spiders that are native to Missouri. And the first is the brown recluse spider. Some people call this the violin spider because it has a characteristic violin type shape on its back. Just a few notes that the female is larger than the male, but their webs are really small and irregular, not kind of pretty, almost cluttered in shape. Um, and they're most often found out of the web. So they're not typically found there, they're crawling around, but they are very reclusive and nocturnal hence the brown recluse. And so they are common, but they are often hidden in dark and damp areas. We don't typically see any serious um, fatal injuries with a brown recluse spider bite here in Missouri, but we can see some skin or tissue damage. So it's best to consult with your doctor or the poison center if you were to be bitten. The next one here is a black widow spider. And that's got that distinctive red hourglass shape on the underside of its belly. Again, this is also a timid spider that will only bite if it's provoked. And bites can cause pain and muscle cramping, sometimes high blood pressure, very uncomfortable symptoms, but not, our, not typically life-threatening. So definitely something to also consult your physician and the poison center with if you do expect uh, or experience a spider bite. And there are many other non-venomous spiders that are in Missouri as well. We wanna just encourage you to watch for signs of infection if you were to be bitten by a potential spider. We often see that um, that is the biggest issue with infection. So just be careful and be aware of that and to always ask for assistance if you have any questions. All right. So I always wanna just tell everybody to have a um, really safe and happy Halloween this year. We wanna make sure that you save the poison helpline in your phone today. So I'd love for you to take out your phone right now and put in the poison helpline or the Missouri Poison Center. And it's 1-800-222-1222. Very easy to remember, but save it in your phone because you never know when you are in the time where you need us, you might feel panic, you might forget the number, then you'll have it as a contact, be able to reach us directly. Again, we're free and fast, confidential. You can call 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're open even Halloween. So we hope that your little ones do not experience any poison exposures this um, coming week. But if they do, or if you have questions about those face paints or other products, feel free to give us a call. Our specially trained nurses and pharmacists will help with any exposures or even questions related to those poisons. So again, our number is 1-800-222-1222. And I am going to end by wishing you a very happy, safe, and poison-free Halloween from the Missouri Poison Center.